Hello everyone, so I finally got my chance to play the quarry and I did this on PS5. It took me around eight to eight and a half hours to get through the main campaign. And I did this one solo. I haven't tried testing with my friends yet or <laughs> playing along like that. But yeah, so I'm finally, finally happy that I was able to play this game when it got announced. It was easily one of my most anticipated games because I loved Until Dawn. I've really been enjoying the Dark Anthology Pictures series that Supermassive Games has been able to put on. But of course, yeah, these are the people who made Until Dawn with their seven years later, a brand new cast and a brand new story that they're able to bring to the horror cinematic game universe. So yes, without further ado, let me get into my review for The Quarry. So again, being developed by Supermassive Games, the Quarry is an interactive drama horror where us, the players, are able to assume the control of nine different teenage counselors who must survive their last night at Hackett's Quarry Summer Camp among supernatural creatures and very violent locals. So basically, summer has come to a close. All these counselors have, the kids have left the summer camp and they're about to make their way out when they start having some car troubles <laughs> and um, their camp counselor basically gets extremely worried, telling them stay in the house. There's nothing we can do if your cars don't work. You need to stay in the house and not come out for the entire night and then they'll get them on the road in the morning. So of course, the kids do not do this <laughs> and they start to discover that there are locals trying to hunt something and kind of in the process they get caught up in almost like a three-way hunt between some sort of creature and the locals, and they're just trying to survive the nights and, of course, unsolve a mystery about what's exactly going on in Hackett's Quarry. So again, you're able to get control of these nine counselors throughout the entirety of the game, and that cast includes actors like Brenda Song, David Arquette you don't get to control, but he's in this game. He's the uh, main camp counselor. Austin Sage, Justice Smith is in this. There's a lot of actually some really, really good <laughs> actors that are in this as all these games have been able to grab for the last little while. So again, this took me about eight and a half hours to go through, about eight hours to play the first bit of the campaign. But then I ended up getting one of the characters killed. But there is a bit of like a death defiance where in a single playthrough, you can go back and you have three chances to save any characters that were killed along the way. You just basically preload in and you can change the choices that you made. So I was able to do that. And thankfully, I only had like, again, the last half hour that I needed to change my decisions and save on the character. So I was able to get a new ending and kind of go from there, which I found was a bit of a nice feature instead of having to do the whole game around and try to save everyone that way. But this is very similar in its style and in, into <laughs> until dawn where there's a lot of cutscenes where you get to choose the dialogue which will shape your relationships with the other characters um well depending on the character you're playing on the the relationships he has with the characters all throughout the game that he's able to interact with and they might make decisions based off of that so if you're a dick to someone they have less of an incline to help you out in a lot of situations. And most of those, of course, you're like you choose your decision within a limited amount of time. There's quick time events that you have to be good at or your character could get injured or even killed in, <laughs> in some ways. So again, you got to be on top of your game when it comes to the quick time events and also to just thinking about how events can play out. I found there was a lot of smart decisions too that this game would actually throw at you where you had to be a little more technical, where you equipped with a shotgun, you see someone dragging your friend away, and of course he's dragging him directly in front of him. So you have an opportunity to shoot him, but of course you have a shotgun. So if you shoot, you have the chance to hit and potentially even kill your friend. So again, you've got to be very, very careful about some of the decisions that you're making. And again, I just liked that they're able to do that to make you think a little more tactically, technically in situations like this that could be extremely stressful at that i just found that was a lot of fun that they were able to add to it and of course too there's sections where you're just able to walk around and explore the environments that you're in so you could find little clues about the backstory of this game things that have happened in hackett's quarry things that um talk about the family that's in this game and of course too just a bunch of little information that'll help your character even find dialogue options that can help them later on in the game so just information that they can use to better survive the nights very very similar in that way the one kind of like major change is in until dawn 
there's a part where you have to hold your controller extremely steady in situations and not let the little blue light bar get like that will give you a little, tiny little thing on the screen that you have to hold it completely still. I know a lot of people just put it on the table and didn't move it that way. But in this one, kind of the same thing where there'll be situations where you have to hold your breath and all you have to do is within a certain amount of time, hold X and keep holding X until kind of the danger has passed and then you can let your breath away. There's little like red bars that'll indicate when you can let go of your breath. So I found that I know a lot of people complain about having to hold their controller still. It was really hard for a lot of people. So uh, that's why they added into this one. But definitely it's I like I like the system that they went for, but I just found it was a lot easier <laughs> than it should have been. I didn't fail at any points in those hold your breath challenges. I feel like it would have been nice if maybe you had to like hold different buttons at a certain amount of time, switch buttons, or even to like move the analog sticks around a little bit to hold the breath. Just something that was a bit more of a challenge instead of literally just holding it until the prompt would tell you to stop. But yeah, I found that when it came to this game, there was a lot of just times where until Dawn's greatness really overshadowed this one where the core in terms of a sequel felt like major steps, like almost leaps backwards in terms of what Until Dawn was able to do. And I found a lot of this is in the characters and the pacing, the storytelling, and even just to, there was so much in the environment Until Dawn that you could pick up and find and just learn about the story. But you don't get that in this one really at all. Um, there's just so much less of it. And I just found it to be very noticeable even within like the first few hours of the games i just found it extremely noticeable that there was a lot less in this game for you to explore and do there's big open environments that just again felt empty in terms of finding things that help you piece together the story where i found until dawn was a little more tight-knit and a lot more for you to explore and do and of course those kind of things that you'd find in the environments mattered a lot more to the story this time around, where again in the quarry, that's just not the case. And yeah, unfortunately, I felt a little bit bummed out because of that. So there's also a few times, it's one of my biggest pet peeves where I like in games where if you, <laughs> there's an area for you to search. And this one, there's a few times where I would get to a certain item, and that would be the, and of course, sometimes you just don't know. You press X, you pick it up. So, like, say there's one point where you have to grab luggage and you grab it and you walk and you can't explore that area anymore. I like it in games where you could like grab the bags, but they'll give you a prompt saying like, do you want to take the bags outside now? So you get that idea that, oh, OK, maybe I should put the bags down if I want to continue exploring. That's not in this game. It's a pet peeve of mine. I just wish it was and it happened a few times, too. I just wish that they would have, again, had a bit of a prompt so you could explore the entirety of, of course, just the room that you're in. Same thing, too, with the characters. I didn't find a lot of them to be all that likable or have a lot of like redeeming qualities. Of course, I wanted to keep all of them alive, but I don't, I don't know. It's just the other cast I found there. Was, well, I mean, Until Dawn was a lot longer. There was a lot more to do. I found there was just a lot more secluded elements with the characters where you really got to know like one specific character where a lot of the times you're either with someone in this game and they're just clashing off of each other in ways that I mean, a lot of the characters in this game are fucking assholes and dicks, so a little tough to get used to them. But yeah, some of them are, some of them do have really, really good plot elements. Again, I just found that the characters weren't as good this time around. But the one thing that kind of annoyed me a lot is I found the pacing of this game to be quite troublesome in a lot of ways, where the first two, three hours of this game are extremely slow, and it's tough to tell again, what it's <laughs> exactly building to you, or it's tough to feel like it's absolutely necessary because again, just how long it takes for its feet to get running in a lot of ways. I just, there's a lot of moments too where you'll have your characters talking to each other, the scene will fade to black, and then it'll fade back into the scene and the characters have maybe taken two steps. It's maybe even two seconds that they started talking again, and then they just go back to it. And I found a lot of these again, just transitions to be really lazy where they could have just extended the scene a little bit extended the dialogue it, it just happens so often and it's really noticeable that again it just felt like a, a, a weird for a cinematic experience and it's just there's so many ways that they could have again 
made it a lot more cinematic, continued the scenes, not had these fade-ins that happen actually quite often in the game. And yeah, it's, it just felt lazy from, again, the cinematic filmmaking perspective of it. And there's times, too, where the game just moves extremely fast and that I felt like it skipped over a lot of story, especially in the ending. The ending is extremely anticlimactic, and I found that like, I thought that there was so much more for me to do that like needed to happen by the end of it, but it just ends on a whim really, really fast, uh, even to just a lot of the events that happen in it happen so fast and sometimes in like the most extremely goofy ways that don't really give you much to again work with or do there's one scene in particular where you're playing as one of the characters and there's people over top of you he's dropping on their conversation and like you can hear them start walking towards the um again there's like the latch that you're underneath you hear them walking towards it and then, like, again, there's no quick time event. There's nothing you can do. They basically open it up and then grab and just slowly drag the character up. And it's just, again, weird in a way where it's like, why wouldn't you, like, shimmy down? And so, like, there's so much that the character could have done because it was obvious that they were going for the hatch. But there was a lot of situations like that that just, again, felt so goofy and predictable and just, like, in a way that... It's so shocking that these characters would be acting like this and would have let themselves get captured in the ways that they did. It was really, really weird. There's some extremely cheesy dialogue in this. And sometimes, too, I found Justice Smith, I don't know what he was going for, what the direction he was given was, but just some of the most dry, bland, and uninteresting dialogue delivery I've heard in a long, long time in a video game. Um, I mean, there's times where he shined it. it, it, it like, it, there's times where it worked. But a lot of the times it just felt so boring and forced, especially with his relationships with a lot of the characters. Again, that's the one thing I liked Until Dawn is like I really felt like I was shaping the story in Until Dawn. But in the core, I found a lot of it was forced upon me and I didn't like that, again, just forcing of choice coming on to me. I, I really liked how I was able to shape the game in Until Dawn. It was just... A lot better, a lot more entertaining. There's so much more that I enjoyed about it. I will say there's one thing too that made it a little more challenging that I kind of enjoyed this time around in the quarry where anytime you had a gun in Until Dawn, there's like the little crosshairs that you would have to put over a certain like prompt and shoot. Where in this one, there's a flashlight attached to the end of all the guns and you have to aim that flashlight correctly in order to shoot. So I like that because I found it's too, it just, it made the game a little more difficult to shoot in that way, and you have to be a lot more technical instead of, of course, you having the crosshair telling you exactly where it's going to hit. I mean, the light does that too, but it's just harder to see, and I found that to be, again, just a little more realistic, a little more interactive, and to just too, it brings up that skill um, that just needed to make these shots a lot more. So I did like that element of it. But yeah, really with everything taken together, I try not to let, like again, what came before diminish my score, diminish my feelings about it. But I had a little bit of a tough time with this because again, it just felt like the quarry was such a step back from Until Dawn and the amazing storytelling, the amazing pacing. And of course too, just in terms of actually true horror, I didn't really feel a whole lot of that in the quarry. I mean, there's a few good, like kind of scary scenes that they do, but a lot of it's just felt cheap in ways that Again, like jump scary, but also too just not explained properly or there wasn't even to I found a lot of the collectibles in this game and a lot of the tarot cards on um, the tarot cards in this game are kind of like the totems where you don't get to use them right away. You basically meet with the there was the psychiatrist in the first game. In this one, there's basically a seer who's telling you to collect these again tarot cards and she'll explain the meaning to them. And then you can see events from that'll happen later on in the game and kind of the decisions that you should be making. So again, I <laughs> I just found a lot of the ways that just everything in Until Dawn overshadowed what was in the core here. And it was just done so much better a lot of the time, if not like <laughs> throughout the complete game. Again, it's just unfortunately there was that overshadowing where I still would like to recommend this game. In, in total, I'm going to have to give Corey a score of a 6.5 out of 10. 
I still found it very, very fun, but there was just a lot that frustrated me with this game. I felt the pacing was really, really off. There was, again, just do a lot of technical things. And until dawn, that was so much better than the quarry and it overshadowed it in a lot of ways. I still do recommend it, especially if you have some friends to play with, because it is very fun. I mean, it's a goofy, easy kind of horror story for you to get into. So those are fun to play. I do find that this game offers enough, again, not to warrant the full price tag of um, $80. I rented this from the library, so I got to do it from free. So if you're able to do something like that to wait till this game goes on sale for like at least half off, that's where I'll recommend playing it or, or sorry, buying it. But I do think it's worth a play, especially if you like, again, just the cinematic storytelling games where your choices affect the story. If you loved Until Dawn, this will be right up your alley. But again, I just found that that game, Until Dawn, overshadows this one in a lot of ways it was just a lot better in a lot of ways and unfortunately for a sequel and a follow-up i expected a lot better from this game and even while playing it still i expected a lot better from it so it's good i still recommend it if you like that style of game but again just don't go into it thinking that it's going to again be able to follow up just the absolute magic that until dawn was but if you played the quarry please let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below and of course if you like this review definitely give it a thumbs up and you can check out everything i do on my channel through all playlists down below and i'll link some up top here for convenience sake um thank you for subscribing turn that little bell on so you know when i upload new videos if you want to check out everything i do twitch stream or twitch stream twitch wise <laughs> there's a link to that in the description of this video and of course my channel bio and in both of those places there's a link to the medium out in which is my discord where we talk about movies video games comic books tv Pretty much everything that's awesome in this world. So you can definitely join that amazing community. I'll make it even more amazing than it is already. And yeah, just awesome, guys. Sky, blue eyes. I see a world behind them. No more time. Sinking into the side.